The head of U.S. Africa Command, General Stephen Townsend, has told VOA about some changes he is seeing on the African continent as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He spoke in a one-on-one -on -one interview with VOA correspondent Carla Bab, who joins us now live from the Pentagon. Carla, what's going on with the Russian mercenaries known as the Wagner Group on the continent? Well, the Wagner Group, they're still in Libya, they're still in Sudan, they're still in uh, uh, CAR, and there are about a thousand of them in Mali now. But the difference that General Townsend says that he is seeing is that while the Russian military was providing them a lot of support in Mali initially, even flying them in, he's not seeing as much of that support now. He says that even the Wagner Group is now trying to enlist some of their mercenaries that are fighting in Africa to go and fight in Ukraine. So, Carla, what did he have to say about Chinese influence on the continent? When you last spoke to him, he talked about Chinese interest in establishing a base in Equatorial Guinea. That's right. So, you know, the last time we spoke, he said that the Chinese had a lot of interest on the Atlantic coast of Africa, but one of their biggest interests was Equatorial Guinea. But what Equatorial Guinea has since done is they have spoken to U.S. delegates and they have emphatically denied that the Chinese would be able to establish a base there because, of course, the U.S. is very concerned of any Chinese base on the Atlantic coast. On the other side, on the east side of the continent, uh, the Chinese already have a base in Djibouti. They are looking, uh, General Townsend says, at that Mozambique channel to try to establish another base. And they've even been reaching out to countries like Somalia to talk about potential basing. But the Somali government has said that they're not interested in a Chinese base. Yes, we're seeing some efforts to recruit uh, Wagner units for Ukraine, and they're going out to their global enterprise uh, asking for uh, volunteers. And we're seeing that happening in Africa, although I think primarily that would, they would probably deploy or redeploy from Libya, um, most likely. And what about CAR? There's a considerable number of uh, Wagner employees there, probably uh, more Wagner mercenaries there than in any uh, country in Africa. Uh, I would anticipate that they would uh, provide uh, some Wagner fighters for the Ukraine fight as well. If they're looking for volunteers, they'll find some there. Now, General, you share resources with European Command. Mm -hmm. You're based in Stuttgart. Uh, with everything going on right now in Europe, uh, have you seen a reduction of some of your resources as they've been um, diverted to European Command? Um, yeah, I would say we have seen uh, some reduction in those resources. Um, AFRICOM has provided about 30 uh, personnel, mostly intelligence analysts and planners and folks like that to help uh, UCOM during this uh, crisis. And we've also, we share some uh, ISR uh, surveillance capabilities. Uh, we have pushed all of those to UCOM that we share. And in fact, uh, UCOM has pushed some back to us that uh, was excess to their needs. Uh, we've seen some impacts to things like airlift because, uh, you know, we're pushing a lot of, we're reinforcing NATO. Uh, so we're pushing troops and units and equipment to the NATO frontier. And uh, we're also supplying uh, aid uh, to Ukraine. And so those flights have slowed down some things for AFRICOM, but I wouldn't say that they've had significant uh, impact to our operations. That's quite telling, Carla. And lastly, we hear General Townsend tell Congress about the problems associated with the way his troops work in Somalia. What did he tell you? Well, since then-President Donald Trump pulled U.S. troops out of Somalia in 2020, they have been, what General Townsend says, is commuting to work. They've been going in from Kenya or from Djibouti, and he has said that this is less effective, less efficient, and it's actually putting U.S troops at a greater risk because going in, establishing a perimeter, establishing security, it, it's actually riskier to do than if they were in Somalia training with their par partners at a continual level. And all of this is happening as al-Shabaab remains the greatest threat to the United States in Africa. They not only aspire and have the capability to attack Americans in Africa, they aspire uh, to attack Americans outside of the region and even in the homeland. They may not have the capability today. Uh, I would say that's an actually an open question if they have the capability to do that or not. 
Hmm. It's an open question. Yeah. You don't know for, for certain? No, I suspect that they do. That's not widely accepted in uh, Washington but, uh, in, or, or in the intel community, but my instincts as a commander uh, are that they do. Are they free to roam in Somalia right now? Are, are they getting enough resistance from U.S. allies and U.S. forces? We haven't seen any airstrikes, um, so there's, there's not really a threat there for that. Talk a little bit about what al-Shabaab has gained. So over the last year plus, uh, al-Shabaab has enjoyed uh, great freedom of movement and uh, throughout Somalia. And uh, now they can't go wherever they want, whenever they want. Uh, there are Somali National Army forces deployed widely across the country. There are AMISOM uh, forces deployed. That's the uh, African Union mission in Somalia. They're deployed widely across the country. Uh, and we are in and out and we're always watching. So al-Shabaab can't go wherever they want, whenever they want. Uh, but they do enjoy a great deal of freedom of movement. And uh, it is my assessment that over the last year, they have grown bigger, stronger, and bolder.